Hello, and thank you for joining me tonight. I go by Loon and Nate, and this is an offering for you to utilize as a tool. It's a distance Reiki session by proxy here. My camera, microphone, tripod, etc. all acts as a proxy for me to focus my energy on, focus the energy on, I guess is a better way to say it. And I'm creating this with an open intention for you to utilize in whatever way that resonates most with you or utilize in a way that you feel called to because you, of course, know best to what's going on in your life at this time. And please feel free to use this, you know, down the road for another purpose if you choose to. But with an open intention on my part, it kind of puts a little bit in your hands to a little more in your hands I should say to set an intention for yourself if you have something you're working to release if you have something you know you're working to heal if you're looking to manifest in any capacity please include that in your intention you know while we light our can or while we dedicate our candle perhaps if you can't find something to focus on, if you're not, nothing is coming through for you, then perhaps, you know, asking for clarity, asking for uh, something along the lines of giving you some awareness might be a good idea. But, you know, my best recommendation, you know, humble recommendation, if you're unsure where to direct this energy, leave it open to your higher self intend i should say rather for your higher self your highest intelligence the most aware and tapped in version of yourself to dictate and direct where this energy may be useful to you in your life or as a way to serve you in some way so i hope that you enjoy and thank you so much for watching this candle going you can see it's been in use for a little bit it's a beeswax candle and there's pieces of garnet inside which I know is difficult to see right now uh, and tansy and we're just going to again set an intention for for an open intention for you to direct the flow or the the way or where this energy may come up for you in your life it's very hot here today so i hope you don't mind i have the fan on I'm going to clear my environment, your aura, energetically through this sacred smudge. This is a blend of sage and lavender, which gives it a bit of a sweeter smell. And I like the crunchy sounds it makes.
we've got our smudge. And I'm actually going to use this feather to kind of blow it at you. All through your aura. really good and powerful it has a very strong um, purifying ability use this rattle to break up the energy around you and by that I mean um, like de declumping, um, making it looser like like when you're sifting sand almost or something. I'm not finding a good way to explain that at the moment but I'm just gonna go around your head. your body over your head down around your neck the jaw area Okay. 
down your body again. Down the back of your legs. you guys. Beautiful. These are given to me by a friend, so thank you, Mina. Just gonna shuffle them. I can't exactly explain why I'm guided to choose a certain deck, but these are just so beautiful and they seem to want to come out today, maybe because we're so close to the recent full moon here. Alright, so we're gonna ask for the information on a goddess who may be someone for us to lean on or contemplate or think about or see what aspects of these are reflected within us. Maybe that could be something that will show us something we need to work on. Maybe it will show us some strength that we have to help us overcome in some way. So we'll just see. I'm just going to cut the deck. Okay. So we have zoom in for you. It's called the Eagle Woman. So, let's do this. Alright, so this is what it says about Eagle Woman. Despite the fact that the life-giving and death-wielding bird goddess is one of the oldest representations of the goddess, Eagles have usually been linked with the masculine, with a few exceptions. The Sphinx of Egypt had the wings of an eagle, and Aztec goddess was also called Eagle Woman. This Eagle Woman shows a new marriage of the feminine and the eagle. She represents all an eagle stands for, spirit, valor, majesty, renewal, accuracy of sight, spiritual aim, and the ability to soar to the heights. She also holds in her hands a vessel, the traditional symbol for the feminine. For that which receives, it contains and nourishes. Here both sets of values are joined, emblematic of a different combination of strengths that are part of the being woman born. Hmm. Or, I'm sorry, are part of being woman born. Eagle Woman is a joyful affirmation of our ability to break out of millennial old stereotypes and find a new definition that embraces the entire continuum of being alive. 
She teaches that women can express the qualities of the eagle while continuing to contain and nurture. So that's interesting. For me then, you know, it's all about balance. Let me fix this really quick. <laughs> For me, that card represents balance, balancing the feminine and masculine energies or knowing that no matter how you identify in terms of of anything it doesn't have to be a concrete identity but how you see yourself there's always another side to your strengths and uh, it's possible to be both receptive intuitive and logical and you know a fighter at the same time so that's interesting um there's joy in the card they're mentioned and um the ability to achieve, to soar, to reach everything and know that you have all these tools with you. So I hope that that's what resonates with you. Now I know that this this uh, session is open, but I was guided to bring out some heart-based stones. This one is chrysoprase. Chrysoprase is very heart healing, helps very well to connect the heart and the solar plexus. I absolutely love it. These raw pieces are so cool, they look like little ice cream sandwiches or something. The lighting doesn't give it justice here. <laughs> it's a beautiful green kind of teal color, though this pink light is not favoring that. Here we have a green calcite, um, you might call it like a crystal castle. Let's see if I can get it to focus better. It's so shiny and interesting. I love the layers of colors have a mossy green kind of color here and it goes up to a pale sea green I'm using a different microphone today so Please let me know what you think. It's beautiful. This is very much a heart healer, but I would say even more so a heart activator. Um, a little bit punchy, a little um, a boosting, I would say, of the heart space. Here we have one of my favorite stones, Kumbaba stone little eye shapes. Great for fertility, growth, expansion, release, resetting, reprogramming, intuition, vision, working with your ancestors. It's just a really amazing mineral if you're into them. a really stunning little uh, floating island of gems. <laughs> we have epitote diop dioptase or diopside. I'm not 100% sure. Um, Loden stone and maybe something else too. This is great for growth and money, stability, um, I really did bring this up for like abundance, finances, wealth, maybe growing new ideas about how we see money depending on what, <laughs> what your focus is for this session, but it's so beautiful, very special to me, I love that one. And last, 
I have this hematoid quartz, which I think is like an orange celestial. If you don't know much about celestials, they're a special kind of quartz. And this just kind of wanted to come out, I guess. I don't have a good reason, but it does work. I mean, it's quartz, so it works very well with anything. It's a master healer paired with the orangey, kind of reddish tones of the hematoid. Um, it's... sorry, did I focus? Yeah. <laughs> it's good for the root chakra, the earth, connecting with the earth, stabilizing our emotions. Um, beyond stabilizing, learning from our emotions, learning from the history of our emotions. If we see these dynamics playing out, if we see these loops or these repetitive relationships or these repetitive emotional responses that we have that are not serving us, it helps us to see that and move beyond it. It's great for physical vitality, dreams, sleep, It's beautiful little palm stone, pocket stone. Alright, so I'm actually gonna take this kambaba, just kind of like run it around your third eye and the back of your head here, which is my favorite place to use it, just to get us started in our energy work here. So just clearing away, if that's your intention, activating third eye perhaps, or increasing intuition, the ability to connect with guides, or your higher self, or God, or the universe, or however you term what lies beyond, or is not necessarily of this material dimension. I'm going to put it near your heart too for fertility, growth, self-love, compassion, and the back of your head, like right back here, to help release that which does not serve you, that which might be holding you in a place you wish to move beyond. Some smudge spray. Just some little gems inside. And this I'm just bringing in for an added element. The water element. And because it's so relaxing. I love to spray this on um, my pillow or if I bring it with me or you know when I bring with me to see clients I like to spray the massage table and the linens before the session so it has a nice cleansed vibe but also um, just adds to the aromatherapy to the experience and again, this is sage as well, although, you know, sage oil and sage, uh, you know, burning the actual leaves, it smells fairly different, I would say. So, we got this going all through your aura, just brushing it down. my hand and just rub it through your aura, your subtle body here. There we go. 
Um, from an energy worker standpoint, the more we work in the aura, the easier the assimilation of the energy seems to flow during the actual session. I mean, it's all part of the session, I guess, but in terms of the more hands-on approach or the Reiki itself, like there's a time of a lot of us doing some work like putting in the work right so if you find that to be true for you just know like yes this is a good time for it but it's also a time of reflection it's not just like go shoot off like a rocket there has to be a nice healthy balance um, of introspection, of contemplation, of working to see and allowing things which you might not have seen right off the bat to come to you, you know, um, that plays into the ego a little. But it's like we want to make sure we're not assuming that we know everything or assuming anything. It has to be balanced by some kind of checks and balancing setup. Okay. Great. Alright, so we're gonna get on to the more traditional Reiki. And again, I'm just setting an intention on behalf of your and my and everyone's highest and greatest good and perfect comfort and alignment. We ask that this session, this energy flow to you if you're open to receiving it and be directed by you. Be directed by your discernment, your awareness, your um, goals, your dreams, your, your your challenges, your your strengths, all of that. We want you to be who is the guide here. And if that is not an option, or if you're already sleeping, or if you're too tired or anything, we want to allow our higher self, our higher consciousness, our most highest uh, version of ourselves, the highest part of our soul or our knowledge to dictate on our behalf, you know, and we bring ourselves to a place of gratitude for that ability to tap into higher intelligence. So... in the water a little bit first see if I feel anything okay. so we're gonna start with some symbols and I'm just guided to use the calming more relaxing symbols first on my palms. Um, 
spiritual awareness, connection, just focus on balancing the third eye, throat, the heart. Solar plexus, the sacral, the root, your knees, and the tops of your feet. Swirling it around you in my mind to envelop you. All of it working in different ways as you're an individual and the part of a greater collective. Okay, I'm just kind of guided to go put my hands kind of on the sides of your face. with the energy here, focus on balancing, providing any release if necessary or any additional um, energy energizing the area. There's the technique in Reiki where we use kind of a ball, like a chi ball or Reiki ball, Reiki orb. I'm just going to focus on that. I kind of see it like a water balloon <laughs> or a bubble, as, but one that had something inside of it. And it kind of floats <laughs> through the universe and finds you and just kind of pops and coats you. This beautiful, enveloping, soothing, energizing, harmonizing, helping you to manifest your goals and dreams ideals, but giving you the ability to be flexible in that. Sometimes we think we want something so badly, but because we're not really using the best language, we're not being clear enough, we do get it, but it kind of falls apart or it's not ideal, so we want to make sure that we leave enough room, enough detachment there to include in our manifesting that for this to reach us in the most easy, comfortable, fulfilling way, or for this to reach us in such a way that it does no harm, or something like that. Like for those of you who want to have financial gain, you know, you don't want to receive it from a car accident, you want to receive it like in an enjoyable way. So just something to think about as you're manifesting. Kind of have this, I don't want to call it kundalini, but it's, it's like a similar, similar energy kind of feeling going on. And, you know, scratch that. It's not exactly kundalini, it's more of a earth-based energy that I feel rising up kind of twisting through your chakra points, rising up to your crown, kind of balancing this spot, helping you to ground, helping you to tap into the manifesting power not only of the cosmic 
nature, but also of the earth, the material plane that we live on, and where most of the things that we're very, very often anyway, where we're looking to manifest, like like a home or a career or a relationship, there's a spiritual nature to those things, but they are material for the most part. I hope you understand what I mean there. Now, if you're looking to manifest spiritual awakening, spiritual um, tribe, guides, connecting with your guides, intuition, visions, lucid dreaming, astral travel, any of that, it would be a bit more of the cosmic nature. Maybe not the, the tribe here. That might be a bit more earthy. So, just to give you examples on how to play with that kind of stuff. Just swirling it around your shoulders here, and then down your back. And again, a little higher near the back of your neck. And down the center of your back, down your spinal, spinal column. Then we have our cosmic energy we can tap into and pull downward. Direct downward, down through all the chakras, through our legs and out the bottom of our feet. Just to create this perfect balance. further again just fan you like brush you off so
Well, I hope that you enjoyed this session and that it serves you very well. I'm so very grateful to all of you. Specifically, I have to mention Patreons and those of you who have been supporting me on Tingles. Um, thank you. I love the Tingles app. I think it's so great. If you guys don't know about it, it's you love ASMR. It's a good, it's a really wonderful app. And, you know, I have no contract to promote it, but I really enjoy it myself. And the individuals who run it, um, these two guys are really incredible. They're they're there. They answer your questions from, from a creator standpoint. They are really doing a wonderful job. So I hope that they, you know, I wish them so much success in what they're trying to do. But, you know, thank you for supporting me there on Patreon. Those of you who have donated, those of you who have become my clients, uh, let me make something for you. You know, thank you so much for your support and love and I'm just so very grateful. Um, but beyond that, you know, thank you for watching. Thank you for for contributing to the the community here on YouTube. Thank you for all of that energy that you um, exchange with me through that um, somewhat strange relationship that we kind of have going on here. So, you know, just from the bottom of my heart, as always, namaste.